Do these bigger, modern 911s give you more space in the rear? Is it easier to get child seats back there? And having recently driven a very special analog 997 CSR, is this turbocharged, four-wheel drive, electronic-aided 911 going to leave me feeling a bit numb? Let's find out. My name's Ben, and welcome to Dad Cars. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So having recently driven a 997 gives us a good comparable today because these cars are bigger, aren't they? I mean, it's 2.2 inches longer, two inches wider, and the wheelbase is a massive four inches wider. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that means more space in the rear, right? But what's really impressive is that despite the size gain, these are actually lighter than the comparable 997. Really impressive when you consider these have got about 60 kilograms worth of extra safety equipment as well, which is music to the ears of anybody looking for a dad car. So excluding the air cool generation 911s, I believe, and this might be unpopular, that the 991 is the best looking 911. I just love it. I love it from every angle. There's not one part of this car which I think looks dated and it all looks completely timeless. And these rear lights to my eye are perfect. I've always thought 996, 997 generation lights always look a little bit awkward. Um, apart from the 996 4S with that full reflector strip, I love those. Even the, uh, the 992 now, I don't know, I just don't think they look as good as these. <laughs> and look, you can see this very car known has driven it down to Portsmouth today for me to film, hence why it's a bit dirty. So this is a 991.2 generation 911, and it features a 3 litre turbocharged flat six, which produces around 414 brake horsepower, around 370 pound foot of torque, zero to 60 in around three and a half seconds and top speed 189 miles per hour and i mean i checked the classifieds today and you can see the used prices starting from about 70,000. but if you're buying it from porsche which is highly recommended with a modern 911 you know more around the 80,000, i would say and obviously being the 4s it's got four wheel drive as well but look that's enough of the wiffle waffle let's have a look in the back and see how practical these rear seats are as a dad car so getting in the back of a 991-911, I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. Right, 511, full grown adult. Okay, well yeah, look, I do fit back here. Yeah, it's the roof line, isn't it? You know, I'm sort of hunched down. <laughs> I can't sit back, but yeah, certainly a half an hour journey. This would be absolutely fine. So you can get ad adults back here. Teenagers, depending on how big your teenagers get, you know, they might be sort of uncomfortable on longer journeys. But let's have a look at child seats though. And yes, I see some Isofix logos. Very exciting. Let's try a rear face and baby seat. So let's have a look at Isofix base. Wouldn't this just be special? if you could get this in here. So far, so good, it's in there. So getting it in position, it's not as hard as I was expecting it to be in the 911. Right, so we clicked in there. What are the chances? Do you reckon the seat will go back? Wouldn't that just be wonderful? Okay, no, so this passenger seat is in a practical and usable position at the moment and it's not going back. However, if I pull it all the way forward and just see if it's possible. So I've moved the passenger seat forward to the point where it does click back. So we've got an Isofix rear face of baby seat in behind, which is super exciting. I mean, it, look, it's, it's compromised. My, my leg space is minimal, but I'm, I'm not touching the glove box. And uh, I mean, I'm more upright than I'd ideally want to be. But um, I could certainly sit here and I'm 5'11". So yeah, a massive thumbs up. Now I did reach out to Porsche and ask them if they'd lend me some of their child seats um, for today. Um, but I, I didn't get any joy with that with that first contact. I mean, I'll keep trying, you know, because this isn't going to be the last 911 I'll review. And I mean, if I had the Porsche child seats here, it'd be really interesting for everybody, wouldn't it? So if anybody knows who I should sort of speak to about arranging that, let me know. And obviously in the 997, we did get the rear face and baby seat in belt secure, didn't we? But not Isofix. And that's the thing, you know, getting this in and out with an Isofix base is actually really practical. Whereas having a belt secure every single time and getting the baby in and out is perhaps not so practical. So um, yeah, 
I'm very impressed. 991, huge thumbs up for me. But how about booster seats, larger seats? I mean, here I've got a folding booster seat with Isofix. And it's this seat, which I demonstrated in the back of the DBS Super Legera and it fitted quite well. So yeah, certainly fits in there quite nicely. Let's check with the, uh, with the driver's seat back. So I've just moved the driver's seat to a position which I would be very comfortable driving in. That's definitely sufficient legroom there. So it's good to see, you know, you don't have to have the Porsche branded child seats. You know, you have, other things do fit back here as well. So just like the 997, belt secure child seats in here are a little bit compromised because of these fixed seat belt positions. So you see here, I've had to pack something in behind this. I mean, it's nice and sturdy, but yeah, Isofix solutions, I think are gonna be your better bet. <laughs> well, it passes a dad car's boot test. I wouldn't say easily. But that is impressive. I was thinking a four-wheel drive one, it would have been less space in the front. Very usable boot. Ready? <laughs> and here you can see the leg room. Now I have pushed this seat very far back, which is always advisable when you've got a little one in a child seat at the front there, obviously get them away from the airbag. You cannot switch off the passenger side airbag, so rear-facing baby seats can only go in the back. This is the fastest car you've Daddy, ever been in. Daddy, is this like the other one? Just like the one that we did, me and you, the other 911, the 997. Yeah, well done, well remembered. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Is that cool? Right, so you put the little car in, so we start it up and see what it sounds like. <laughs> So we already know the exterior, the 991, is the 911 that does it for me. It gives me the fizz. But what about interior? Coming from an Aston Martin? Well, let me tell you, I think it's perfectly judged in here. This feels really, really special. This contrast stitching, I love red interiors on cars. I really do. This steering wheel feels so special. This, they've nailed it. They've nailed it. I think they've gone too far with the current generation one, but this one, oh, I feel very excited just sitting in here and that's what you want from a special car like this that costs this much money right so should we go then girls yeah so the handbrake in here is an automatic one just like it was in the dbs super leger i recently drove so this is the third porsche i've ever driven and you can see the other two on my channel Taycan turbo s and the 997 csr could this be the goldilocks sweet spot for me huh? let's find out So the steering wheel on here then, it, it feels a lot more modern than that 997 one. It looks lovely. And it, it probably fits the car much better, but I love the feel of that 997 one in the hand. You know, very small and lovely. And the instrument cluster on here is incredible. So you've got all but one of your dials are analog. And that's what I like. Right. The throttle response is fantastic. Just coming out there. Really, really good. Early indications tell me that you can't really tell this is a turbocharged one. So the owner of this car, I owe him a massive thank you, don't I? And he's actually following me right now in my DB9. And it looks lovely. Oh, it does look fantastic. Those Astons are so beautiful, aren't they? But these must look like a right pair driving around. This car is not lacking for power in any shape or form, is it? Right, let's give it a little pull uphill. Ready? Oh, yes. <laughs> right, girls, so we are going to go a little bit fast here, okay? So everybody heads back. You know the drill, yeah? This is the fastest car you've ever been in with your daddy. Feel how fast it is. Are you ready? Right, we're going to go. You ready? Whoa, what do you think of that? Doesn't take long to get to 40, does it? <laughs> this feels lovely. So running costs then, I mean, this car's owner is 25. God, it's also got a Porsche McCann, McCann a diesel one. <laughs> Incredible. But insurance on this for a 25 year old, about two and a half thousand pounds miles per gallon. 
I mean, you can get about 35 on a long run, but it's more likely if you're really on it, it's going to be in the teens, isn't it? Tax, I believe, is £360, I believe. I'll double check. So, having recently driven that 997 CSR, I can tell you that, yes, look, straight away, you do notice a difference. In that CSR, the steering feel was like running your hands along the tarmac. You could feel so much from the steering wheel. And just the way that those guys set those cars up, they're just, they're incredible for driver engagement and feel. And some of that is lost in this car. But look, if you're thinking that that's a bad thing, the level of refinement you get in here while still remaining very sporty feeling. This is such a special sporty feeling car. And it feels like pinpoint precision sharp. Sniper rifle sharp. Oh, this is lovely. Obviously, visibility, seating position in a 911. It's just perfect, isn't it? And the view of that iconic 911 shoulder in the wing mirror there. And the shapes at the front makes it really lovely to place and just a lovely thing to look at and just you're constantly reminded that you're driving a very special car, a 911. So it's the age-old question that's been debated for the last 60 years amongst petrol heads and will continue to be debated forever, I believe. What is the ultimate 911? Well, I've got the answer for you. Is it an air-cooled one? Is it a turbocharged, super-fast one? Is it one with... Oh, shit. You go. I just pulled over, the camera re-secured. So the age-old debate that's been raging for the last 60 years is what is the best 911? <laughs> it's a debate that's gonna rage on forever, I think, amongst petrol heads. But I've got the answer for you. Is it a manual? Is it a PDK? Is it a naturally aspirated? Is it a turbocharged, really fast one? Is it the one with hydraulic steering? Is it the early cars? Is it the most recent one? Well, the thing is, Porsche have been so hard at work making arguably the best sports cars for the last 60 years. And there's so many variants. So the answer is, whatever, whatever 911 you think is the best 911, that's the best one to you. And that's all that matters. There's a 911 for everyone, isn't there? Right, so we overtake this cyclist. <laughs> but what do you think? What's the best 911 of all time? Drop it in the comments below. Let's have a go at these flappy pedals, shall we? Right, so move that over. Engages manual modes. Oh. Yeah, these flappy pedals feel amazing. It's got a really satisfying short little click on it. And it moves with the steering wheel as well, which it doesn't do in the Aston Martin. Which I guess when you're on the autobahn doing crazy speeds, you want both hands on that wheel no matter what. I just noticed actually that the dampers are in sport mode. So let's click it. And yeah, it gets even more civilized and yeah, refined. This is lovely. You could easily have your child sleeping in the back in that rear facing ice of baby seat. <laughs> Up straight, head back, okay? In manual mode, national speed limit. Are we ready? Whoa! It was that fast. It doesn't take long to get to 60, does it? Or was it? But around three and a half seconds, something like that. And with the four wheel drive, you can actually sort of probably hit those numbers as well. And the Porsche sports exhaust that's on this as well, with its switchable modes, it's really well judged. And when it's in the loud mode, oh, is it loud? Whoa, whoa, those, they're lightning fast. 
God, they've, they've just nailed it, haven't they? With these PDKs now, they've absolutely nailed it. Look. Never known gear shift so quick. You just see that rev gauge. Da, da. And down shifts as well. Wow, wow. Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> I do love the earlier feel from that, that earlier 997 CSR. And I mean, if I had one of those, and then I also had a you know a more refined sort of daily as well, I mean that would definitely be a 911 to have. But if I could only have one 911, which on my budget I can. I think it would be the 991. They've done such a fantastic job now with these turbocharged 911s. Turbo lag, you know, is <laughs> something which in the 90s was, you know, a real, real big thing, but it's almost non existent now with these cars. <laughs> look, that just goes to show how refined it is in here, look. <laughs> You're right, sweetie. Now, if I was a normal person and only had two or even three children, a 991, 911 is what I would most likely would get next after the Aston. I mean, I'd only be able to afford a 991.1, an S, you know, one of the really early cars. But I've got four children, haven't I? And I want my next car to have the ability to carry all four of my children. So I need a rear seat which is flat to get a multi Mac in there, three across can't do that in a 911 so I can't add this to the list to replace the Aston because of those rear seats and I guess that's quite welcome because I've driven so many exciting cars on the dad cars channel already that that list is, is growing by the day so in summary then for the 991.2 C4S I mean having a 911 which is a bit more refined you know in a comfort setting I mean look at, look at the little sweetie here um, you know, and it's actually just a bit more sort of poised and precise and, yeah. and easier to drive. It's easier to drive, isn't it? Is that, is that I mean, as a dad car, you know, it's, it's probably a safer and more practical and thing that you could actually sort of daily and drive in all weathers. So, yeah, this may well make the 991 a better dad car. However, this car today is considerably more expensive than that CSR and around three times the cost of a decent stock 997. So I'll have to get an early 991 on the channel for a fairer comparison. So look, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, hit the bell icon, like, comment, share this video, stick around after the, uh, the credits because I always put in some outtakes and with these guys, I've got some good ones. And look, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Trust you because yesterday you were so good, weren't you? I sneaked I it. my hand in. It's sneaky. I actually bit it. You sneaked one? <laughs> what? Hello. Did you? <laughs> now, girls, remember this is a very fast car, okay? okay. Alright, so Daddy says we're going to go fast. Put your heads back, okay? okay. Going to go fast, heads back. I can see a Alright, sorry about that. It's never straightforward when I've got those little ones in the car. Um, oh god, I love it. It's so good. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Have you seen all my other dad car reviews? I've done loads of cool ones. A couple of other Porsches as well. Check them out. And I'll see you on the next one. Sing with me, sing for the year. Sing for love, sing for